Cambodia, a country fresh off the brink of war, overcoming a harsh past of genocide and facing the loss of two generations, and over 51% under the age of 18. There's also another segment of society, one that scavenges through mountains of trash to find recyclables to sell for a meager wage. Children as young as four are forced to work in the dump just to earn enough money to eat. When we first arrived at the trash dump in Phnom Penh, we knew something was different. We had never seen such severe poverty at, su at such a level and on such a grand scale. And then to see such little kids, children playing and working in these dangerous conditions, it was heartbreaking. The trash dump in Phnom Penh, Cambodia is the final resting place for more than 1,000 tons of trash each day. Covering over 100 square acres, its size is immense. It's been called the closest thing to hell on earth, but the trash dump is also called work and home to more than 2,000 men, women, and children. The dump is also home to a large number of orphans who lost their parents to AIDS, prostitution, or drug abuse. I'll never forget walking out of the village and turning into the edge of the dump and seeing these homes, and then seeing these beautiful children run out towards us. Flies everywhere, rotted stuff everywhere, and a creek that ran in front of the home, and it was just dis disgusting beyond description. And we walked up into the home and at the very next door neighbor's house, they had eight pigs living right underneath their house. Flies, it was just, it was awful. My heart broke. I mean, I can't tell you that anything, any child should live in that condition. And I mean, you, you have to really think that these are people that live in this home. Here we are in the uh, dump community in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and there are presently uh, seven children living with their mother in here. Uh, one is in the hospital, uh, has been in the hospital for three weeks. Uh, another one is in an orphanage now. And so right now there's five of these children uh, living in this small, this small hut. I have uh, two children working at the dump, and uh, it's so difficult for me to to find uh, a living for my children and also I have small children and so difficult for me to, to work in the dump and at the same time uh, think of my children while I am there. As a single mother, she and most of her children work grueling 10 hour days in 100 plus degree heat in the garbage dump. Materials such as metal, plastic bottles and cardboard hold the highest value bringing an average of 50 cents per day, it's barely enough to eat. Working in close proximity with heavy equipment has caused several deaths. Children can be found buried beneath the rubble and trash fires burn and plumes of black smoke choke the air with toxic gases. Some of the dangers of uh, working in the dump is being injured by the glasses, broken glasses, and also the, the injections, the needles from injections. A recent study found dangerously high levels of dioxin in the soil and large amounts of heavy metals in the metabolism of children who work in the dump. 
not to mention the hidden dangers of gang violence, drug trade, and sex trafficking. It was simply hard to comprehend what was happening literally right in front of me. I mean, you see these children and they're exhausted. They're just dragging themselves to try to keep up and make a meager wage so they can eat. You know, you, you see families up there, generations that have worked the dump and that's all they know. And you just see into their eyes and you just wonder what they've seen, what they think, and you just know they have very little hope. This is Daylene. This is her home. She's only seven years old, and during the day, while her mother works in the dump, she cares for four other children, alone. Her mother understands the dangers, but is left with no other choice. It's difficult, but I don't have any choice because I need to find some money to feed my children. But Daylene dreams of a better life. Daylene dreams of her voice being heard around the world. Daylene dreams of being a singer one day. You know, you look around and you see these people and these children, and they live and they work in the trash dump, but I can't get past the God-given greatness that lies within each one of them. I mean, they, they're born with dreams, they're born with ambitions, and they, they work in the dump simply because they have to make ends meet. And I mean, they want to be doctors and lawyers and singers and teachers and police officers. And I think if we can help them with that opportunity, they can literally change the world. With growing international pressure, the Cambodian government is trying to salvage their image and relocate the trash dump. Well, here we are out at the new dump for Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Uh, we've been traveling around in the uh, present dump and uh, we've been told that by the government and by others that they have been planning on creating this. And uh, what we found out from our government official today was that it is very uh, environmentally driven. Um, but for us, the concern is uh, what's going to happen to the people? What's going to happen to the people we talk to in the village living around the dump? Are they going to live here? We already see that there are squatters out here. Uh, now they are probably working on this, but there are already people out here. It's about seven miles outside of the city. Um, but one of the big concerns just is, are the people going to follow it out here? What are they going to do? Uh, everyone we've talked to, we still haven't run into anybody who really knows what they're going to do once they leave the present day dump and the situation they're in. Knowing that the, they will close the dump soon, I, I don't know what to do because I don't know what uh, I don't have any other skill. And uh, regarding my plans, probably I'll just stay home and see what will happen next. Knowing that the dump site will be closed soon, I feel very sad because I cannot find money to my mother. Pim is one of the most amazing young ladies I have ever met. This 16-year-old girl takes care of her family during the day and provides for them, then goes to school in the afternoon for a couple of hours with a simple hope that her future is going to be different. And then on top of this, she has to work in the trash dump all night with just trying to get a couple of hours of sleep while she works in between loads being dumped by the trucks. Can you really imagine this being your reality? My uh, older siblings cannot go to work. I have uh, a number of uh, younger brothers and sisters. So if I cannot find money, uh, we don't have food to eat. So it's so difficult if the dump is closed and I cannot find some money. Right now, these children have no hope and no future. They have very little chance of even obtaining an education. They have no other choice. They have no other option. When we talk to them, they just told us they have no idea what they're going to do. If this dump is to close, they have nowhere else to turn. They've wound up here because they have nowhere else to turn, and they're working and picking through trash just trying to survive. And they live with a government that's very ineffective at even caring for its own people. And so for them, they don't have any other option. There's nothing they can do and it is up to people to step in and try to do something to give them some hope, give them ed education and if that doesn't happen they don't know where to turn. We came to Cambodia to shoot a documentary about hope and about change in the dump community and this sadly is a story we found but we did find a group of people that have dreams, they have ambitions to be better and to change the world 
there's so much left to do.